I only have one day to explore the amazing city of Berlin, so I'm excited to show you exactly what you can see in 24 hours in Berlin, Germany. Let's go. The first spot we're heading to is the Brandenburg Gate. So behind me, we have the Brandenburg Gate. It's probably one of the most famous spots in all of Berlin, and this place is packed with history. And believe it or not, when Napoleon came through here, he actually stole the top statues off this monument. It took almost 10 years for the Germans to be able to get them back, which is almost ironic because the goddess on top of the chariot is actually the goddess of peace. So to have those monuments stolen as a war conquest goes against everything this place stands for. So another thing that's crazy about this place is it used to be illegal to walk through the center of the actual gate. It was an honor that was only reserved for the royal family. So. What I just did there, couldn't do back in the day. Nearby the Brandenburg Gate is the next spot to check out, and that's the Reichstag building. Being just a block or so away from the Brandenburg Gate, it's a pleasant stroll to get here. The building behind me is the Reichstag. It's the official building of the German parliament, and it's beautiful on the outside and the inside. If you do want to go in, you have to get your tickets pretty far in advance. They recommend staying about a week to a month just because it does sell out. One of the key selling points of this is the new glass dome that's on top. So when Berlin was under attack by the Soviets, the Soviets destroyed most of the building, and they rebuilt it with this glass dome, and it's supposed to offer amazing views of the city. If you were to zoom in right here, you'd be able to see a bunch of people walking around that dome. After wandering around the Reichstag grounds, I made my way to one of the most important monuments in all of Berlin, and that's the memorial to the murdered Jews of Europe. And while I didn't have time, there is a museum beneath the memorial, which I've heard is an impactful spot to visit. So if you have time and want to more fully appreciate this monument and understand all the horrors that it stands for, definitely check that out. So we're walking through the memorial to the murdered Jews of Europe, and this is an incredibly somber memorial. It's all these concrete pillars. It almost feels like you're wandering through a cemetery, how they kind of roll up and down. They're all different heights. Yeah, this place really has a haunting atmosphere. You just keep crisscrossing with different people because you really can't see around the corner. It really gives you this uneasy feeling. You almost lose your direction a bit in here. The next stop I'm heading to is a classic spot to see while in Berlin, and that's Checkpoint Charlie. My dad actually visited here back when it was still active in the 80s, and I'm sure it's changed a lot since then. So we're at Checkpoint Charlie. This is what separated East Berlin from West Berlin. This is the U.S. outpost, and the fact that there is a McDonald's not even 50 feet from there. Man, I've never been more proud to be an American. That's awesome. One thing I didn't notice was how small Czech Park Charlie really is. It's basically the size of a state fair trailer. For something to be that small and have that much historical significance, it's pretty cool. So not only was there a McDonald's at Checkpoint Charlie, this McDonald's here actually has a school bus out front. And I actually don't think the Germans use school bus and they take regular public transportation. So it feels like I'm basically right at home. Relatively nearby the hustling bustling Checkpoint Charlie area is the next spot I'm visiting on my list. I'm heading over to the ruins of an iconic piece of history, the Anhalter Bernhof which translates roughly to the Hitchhiker train station. So behind me is the Anhalter Bernhof. It's an old train station that was actually bombed out back in the war. And now it's really just ruins. And it's kind of cool, you can walk through it. It's nothing too grand, but when you see what it looked like back in the day, it was magnificent. Now they've turned into a nice little park. So kind of cool they kept a little bit of the history, but man, would have been really cool to see it back then. So I don't know if you guys can tell, but in the background, it looks like they turned it into a sports complex. So it almost looks like a modern day castle where they play some sports. Nice little sign the ruins. Moving right along, it's time to visit one of the most iconic things Berlin is known for, the Berlin Wall. When no trip to Berlin is complete without seeing the Berlin Wall, or at least what's left of the Berlin Wall. So that's where we are right now. And believe it or not, if you plug it into your phone, it'll take you right here, which is some decrepit remains, and it's almost more of a museum. If you want to see the cool art portion of the Berlin Wall, that's called the East Side Gallery, and we'll be heading there next. Let's go. So I'm at the East Side Galley. It's the longest section of the Berlin Wall that's still intact, and it's got all this really cool artwork. And one thing that I didn't really realize beforehand was we've all seen the famous painting of the two guys kissing on the Berlin Wall. And what I didn't realize is that was actually a real picture of an actual event that happened. So I guess there's a thing called the Communist Fraternal Kiss, and that's where if two communists meet each other, they're supposed to kiss each other on the cheek, or if they're really familiar with each other, they're supposed to kiss each other in the mouth. And that's what that's depicting right there, which is something I'd never heard of before. It's almost amazing that something so diabolical like the Berlin Wall can be something so beautiful now. Over 126 people died trying to cross from East Berlin into West Berlin, so quite literally crossing this wall was life or death for people. It's amazing how recent history this is, so for it to be transformed into something so beautiful and kept in the city when it's got such a dark past, it's cool to see that history being reappreciated in new ways.
This gallery section of the wall just seems to go and go and go. I think each one is made from its own painter. So you get to see tons of different painting styles, tons of different themes running through here. If you're an art connoisseur, you could spend a whole lot of time here admiring each individual paint. With the east side gallery under my belt, I have quite a little bit of walking to get me where I'm going. Luckily, this is a really pretty area. One thing I've really come to love about Berlin is there's just so many little green spaces. I just stumbled across this park and it's literally just called Park on Google Maps. But the buildings all around it are spectacular. If you're trying to find this place, I believe it's called Bethanian Creative Quarter. Google should be able to take you there. So this is St. Thomas Church. It's a beautiful old building over by the East Side Gallery. I don't have a ton to say about it. The architecture is beautiful. So the Spree River runs all through Munich and there's some wonderful river walks all along here. If you can't see behind me, that's one of the prettiest bridges I've ever seen. It looks straight out of a Harry Potter movie. Might be one of the most efficient bridges I've seen. You have trams, bikes, cars, and boats going underneath it. So I've been seeing this TV tower up here the whole day, and I feel like I've walked so far, and I've gotten nowhere closer to it at all. It must be massive. At this point, I'm a little hungry covering all this ground on foot, so it seems like a great time to pick up a delicious German delicacy that you can find all over this city, and that's currywurst. So we have our currywurst here. It's something you need to try when you come to Germany. Courtney and I tried this in Austria, but we've never had authentic German currywurst, so I'm really excited to try this. They gave us this little fork. I don't know if fork's the right word. It's almost like a toothpick. Mine's what you get from an ice cream truck if you've got uh, you know, a cheap ice cream, but We'll see if it gets the job done. I'll we'll start with the fry here, or a pames, as they're called. Mm. It's not an intense curry at all. It's almost sweet. If anything, it almost tastes like ketchup, and that's probably wrong to say. But almost like a Heinz ketchup with like a pepper in it. Since I picked up my curry wars near Berlin's famous museum island, I figured I needed to wander up and down this beautiful area. One thing I've been really enjoying about the Museum Island area is all the waterfront here is beautiful. Not only is it really scenic waterways, but it's flanked by beautiful buildings and they just capture the classic Roman architecture that looks so professional. It just feels so scholarly. So one thing I've noticed in Berlin is all the boats seem very, very short. They're not really built up with these high decks. And I'm realizing it's probably because of all these very, very low bridges they need to clear. I'm watching some of these boats come along the river by Museum Island and they're barely making under these bridges. The Museum Island District, very cool. So I've been walking here for a good while now and these beautiful buildings are still going. I feel like you're surrounded 360 by absolutely beautiful architecture. Really, really cool part of Berlin. And while I didn't have time to venture inside any of these museums, I've heard they have amazing exhibits. If you have a favorite museum you recommend visiting, feel free to let future travelers know by sharing that in the comments below. While in this area, I really enjoy just wandering the streets and admiring all the amazing architecture. So behind us, you have Humboldt University. If you can't tell, the architecture is stupendous. This is right along that museum corridor on the island. So if you're looking for great architecture in the city, Gotta check this place out. So that ends 24 amazing hours in Berlin. If you guys are still around, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and stick around to see more content. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.